Paper Chef here. In today's Brothers Can and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial, you're going to learn how to make a liner for a clear tiny treat box. I'm just going to go ahead and show you the project so that you know what this is about and you understand how this tutorial is going to work and explain why I'm doing this right now at this particular time and then we'll go from there and I'm going to teach you how to do all of this on your machine. Although I've taught you how to do this on your canvas workspace before we're just going to do all the editing on the machine itself. All right so let's start with the project. This is the project we're making with the help of our scan and cut. Now you could you know trim trim your paper down, trim another piece um, you know with a paper cutter and try to get it right or you could use the scan and cut and get exact precision. Okay so this is another one I mean, I put a little daisy on that one. I'm going to be opening up these boxes to show you what's inside. Hi, Darlene. Good morning. At the end of this tutorial. So you're going to get to see what I put inside these boxes. Okay, but you could try to do this on the paper trimmer, of course, right? But the Scan and Cut does scoring for you. It's going to be hard to see, right? But there's little perforations. See the, see the score lines? So I'm going to teach you how to make the score lines, how to make the shape, Okay, so some of the skills you're going to be learning, and you already if you already know how to do this in Canvas Workspace, don't give up the opportunity to learn how to do something on the machine itself, because what if your Wi-Fi isn't working? What if you don't want to hook up your computer and go to Canvas Workspace? What if you're on the road and you take your machine to a workshop? You can do all of what I'm showing you right on the machine itself. You can do all this editing. Okay, so the skills you're going to be learning are welding shapes. So we're going to take this shape, we're going to make a rectangle, we're going to make another rectangle. We're going to weld them together. So that's that's one skill. You're going to learn how to align them before you weld them. Lining to the center, aligning horizontally so that they're perfectly aligned. Okay? And then you're going to learn, hi Debbie, good morning. Then you're going to learn how to create the score lines and make the square to put in the middle to, to score for our score lines. Okay? That's going to take a little more editing because of the way that the scan and cut scores. So let's jump into it and most of this most of this tutorial is going to be just looking at the screen. <laughs> That's what it's going to be. But I, I even have my final showing you I want I have my final one showing you what mine looks like and how many you can fit on the screen. We're going to do one at a time just because of time. So here's what you can fit on the screen and you can see how they're they're leaning in different directions because that that way I could fit more and I used what's called an auto layout feature for that. There's so many things that we could get into, but this is just, we're going to do one of these. Okay, so let me just explain that. We're just going to be doing one of those. Hey, Gina joined too, and Eileen. So good morning or afternoon, wherever you're at. Okay, let's, let's click. I'm going to click it. Okay, I'm going to get out of this. All right, so we're starting here. This is where you're starting. I want to, I want to break this down. The way I like to teach is in segments. So the first thing you're going to learn is the, this, the first skill you're going to learn is just creating the shapes. We're going to create two rectangles. We're going to rotate one of them. We're going to weld them together. So we're, in other words, we're going to create this cross. It's like a cross. In fact, I even showed you how to make an actual cross. When I made baby shower, uh, party showers for a baby christening and baby, baby shower. So this is like making a cross, except these are going to be equidistant from each other. They're not, they're not like, they're going to be equal. Okay, so let's just start. And if I'm going too fast, just tell me. Okay, I want you to tell me. Hello, Paula, and hello, Donna. So what I did is I went to pattern. I went to the, I went to, I turn on the machine. You see pattern and scan. I clicked on pattern. Now I'm going to click on the shapes. It's the first icon. So the shape I'm going to use is a square. It doesn't matter, or a rectangle. We're going to turn, any square can be turned into a rectangle by making sure you check off this button, which is that you can change the height and width and width. Uh, independently of each other. If you keep that button on, the height and width change in proportion to each other. Okay, so I'm going to select that button because I want to change them independently. Okay, so here's your settings. 1.96. Why? Because it just works. The box is a two inch box all around. 1.96 works. Okay, even though the even though you have three pieces like you would think, you know, it's a two inch box. So two, four, six, but you don't want to go two, four, six because the box, you're, you, you pop up the top of the box. So you want to go 5.9. So the width is 
I, I've done so much experimentation with this. I've used these boxes for so long and I actually want to cry that these are retiring. I'm going to get into the whole retiring part. I mean, that's why I did this. That's why I'm doing this tutorial right now. I'm going to get into the, the sale price of these and all that stuff. But we got to get working, right? So I love these so much. I'm going to probably get like 50 boxes. No, I'm not kidding. I'm not 50 boxes, like five packs. There's like 16 in a pack. Hi, Teresa. Oh, I love the snails. I'm glad you got that. Okay, so anyway, we need two of these. Why? Because we're going to take one of them. We need, we need two of them. We're going to take one. We're going to put it on there. And we're going to take the other one and rotate it. Okay, so we're going to click on two. So we want two of those. And this, these numbers will be in the description of the video. We just pause now. Right? The numbers will be in the description of the video. So here what we, here's what we want to do. We want to take one of these. doesn't matter which one. And we want to go to the edit. And we're going to go to object edit and we're going to rotate one of these. How much? 90 degrees. We want to turn it to the right so that it's across, right? So 90 degrees to the right. It doesn't matter if it's 90 degrees to the left. It's a rectangle, right? 90 degrees. We're rotating it. Okay, so, so far so good. And I'm live on purpose so you can give me your feedback. So I hope, you know, if anyone's confused, you tell me. Because I, I teach this all the time in my boxes courses on the scan and cut and I teach this all the time in the canvas workspace. But this is the first time I'm going to delve so deep into the editing on the machine. I think it's one of the first times. All right. So what we have here, see these two shapes. We can't weld them yet because if we weld them, they won't be even. Even if you think they're even, even if you're like, even if you try to use the lines on the mat and you're like, oh, they're pretty even. No, they're not even. Don't ever think they're even. You have to use the alignment tools. So what you want to do now is you want to click OK and you want to select the objects. Because these are the only things on the screen, we can use the object selection. This is the object selection. We can use this one. The second object selection option means just select everything on the screen. When they turn red, then that means they're both selected. Okay, and if you accidentally do this and you can't do what I'm doing, it's because you accidentally deselected them. So that's one selected, this one selected, right? You can select them each individually like that or you can just use this button and select everything on the screen. There's only two objects, right? But you got the red lines. Now you want the four arrows going this direction. The, the four arrows in different directions. If you're following along with me on your machine, then that's great because you can really make some box liners. Why not, right? Yes, everything. So Debbie asked, are these settings the same on the, C, on the 350? Absolutely, yes. Everything I'm showing you can be done. I've been doing this for years and years on the CM300, every single model of scan and cut. I'm not sure about the dash line part. Well, yeah, I am sure about the dash line part. I'm going to turn it on behind me and make sure and just, you know, I'll double check that line part. I can't because the power is not plugged in. So anyway, what, what I'm doing right now is turning on my CM350 behind me. But anyway, everything I'm showing you up till now is definitely included. Okay, so then we're going to click on this. And we're going to, that's the four arrows. And now we're going to use the alignment tools. So we're going to use this button here. And this is how to align. We want to align these in relation to each other vertically. This is vertically and horizontally. So when you click on them, watch them change. Watch that change. See that? See that crosshair? It's still not, it's still not exactly. And you're going to uh, orient them both vertically and horizontally. Okay, so if you've been following my tutorials, you know what I'm going to do next, which is I'm going to group these because we just did all that work. We made two rectangles. We rotated one, then we aligned them to the center and to the and to horizontally. And now they're perfectly aligned. But if we don't group these, well, actually, we're going to weld them. Actually, well, you could group them so that they don't. That here, let me let me explain something. If I was to group these right now using this button, the problem is they're cutting lines. So what would happen is they would just cut out one, two, three, four, five squares, right? Five perfect squares, nonetheless. But we don't want a square. We want, we want this to be like a, this shape. So we need to weld them. We need to weld this together. So we're going to click on this button here. And it's, it's showing like a blob of like a circle attached to a triangle and it turns into this big blob. That's what welding is. It makes two shapes become one. Once you do it, it can't be undone. So it's irreversible and that's okay because I've already experimented with these measurements. We click okay. So it's, it's almost like it's been grouped and welded because 
Now it's one object, so it's great, right? So far, so good. Let's move this all the way off to the side because we're going to work with the middle now. I'm going to check for any confusing, confusion comments. Good morning, G and Debbie and Joanne. Good morning. Okay. So far, so good. Now we're going to do is we need to add the square. We want to add a square, but we can't add a square. Okay. Here's, here's why. Here, here's why. Let me just, let me go, let me explain. Let me click OK. If we were to just add a square, right, pattern square, we're going to end up with a line. It's going to be a solid line. There is no option for these, these items, everything in here. Now there is in Canvas, in Canvas Workspace, it's a lot easier, but you can't just add a square because a square, or any shape for that matter, would give you a cutting line. We need to add a dash. Yes, you can still size it. Yeah, but you can, you can size it as one. You can make a different liner for a different box, but you can, you can resize the object as one. We'll get to that maybe later, but, but we got to stay on track. Okay, so what we want to do now is we need a dash line. Okay, we need a dash line. Hi, Sandy. Click on the borders. Scroll down to the dash line. Okay, there's a dash line. That's this. It's in the border pattern. There's a dash line. Now, here's the trick. You can't, this is not a square, it's only a line. So, how do you make, how do you turn this into a, um, how do you turn this into a square? Well, first of all, we need it to be 1.96 wide. Because remember, that's the size of our height, right? That's the height of this box, 1.96. All right, now follow me. I could make four of these, but they're going to be harder to align if I make four. So let's make two, let's make two of these, and we're going to use the skills you just learned. We're about the same, you're going to use this, we're going to do the same exact thing we just did with this. What I'm showing you how to do with the line, you just did with the two rectangles, which is rotating one. We're going to set that on the mat. There they are. Let me just get them. Here, let me, let me click OK for a second. Oops, not OK. Let me click Edit. See how they, there they are? Right, and there's the other one. We got a toggle in the selection there. We want to rotate one of those. We're going to take one of these lines up there and we're going to rotate it. Go to Object Edit, Rotate. Okay, just like we did before. So far, so good. We're even going to align it like we did before, right? We're going to take this object and we're going to align it like we did before. Okay, we want, we want, we want to make a corner. This is what we want to make, something like that, right? We want to make a corner. Okay, we want to make half the box, half a dash box, because this is the dash line. Okay, so let me just zoom in there so you can see where we're at so far. See how it's a dashed line? Let me zoom in some more. See that? That's a dashed pattern. The way we got the dashed pattern was using a border. The border, unfortunately, doesn't let us cha you know, change to a square. You have to make our own square. But we like having a dashed pattern in the, in the machine. Okay, so at this point, you might be thinking, can I make cards? Yes, you, can, you, can use score this, you could have used this to make a score line on your card. But we're making a whole square. So if you just have one line, it becomes a score line on your card. All right, so back to this. Let's get this and let's make, let's turn those into, so let's go to Object Edit. I mean, we're going to go to Selection. Oh, we don't want that selection. We want this selection. That selection is just when you select an area. So this selection tool lets you select objects in a certain area, which we want just those two. And what are we going to do to them? We're going to align them. So go to the Alignment tool like we used before. Go up to the Alignment and you want to do Alignment this time to the, let's see, to the top. We want to align them to the top so that that line is touching that line. Okay, you can't really see that it did anything. And we want to align them to the right. So now you can see that it did it did something. We've made a right angle. So now you should know what I'm going to do next if you're one of my students in my Udemy courses. I am going to group this because all I do is talk about grouping. <laughs> I don't want things to move apart. They're both selected. I like this shape. I want to group it. So I'm going to go object edit and group. That's this one here with the circle and the triangle. Okay, so far so good. Now it looks like it's a dash square, but it's not. Right? It's not. It's just it just it's just that it selects like that. So, what you need to do is let's make another one. Go up here to the plus sign and make another one. Click plus. Just make another one, and now you have two. See? There's two of them. One's there and one's there. The problem is they're not they're they're the exact same, okay? So you have one that's like this and you have another one that's like this. But we need one to be like this. So we need to flip it, right? We need to flip it 180. So 
we're going to take this one, it doesn't matter, that one's good, and we're going to take the other one, go to rotate, and to flip it 180, you could just click 90 degrees twice. And it doesn't look like anything, but watch. Click OK, click OK, and I'm going to zoom in to really show you what we did here. I'm going to just select this one. See that? Is that cool or what? I'm really zoomed in here. I'm going to pause. I'm pausing to show you, so you make sure you understand how we just made a square. All we did was take two, we made a dashed line using the borders. We then, we then aligned the dashed line so we have a right angle. We then rotated, we grouped it and we rotated it. So do we have a square yet? Not quite. We need to take this one and touch it to that one, align these two on top of each other so that we, we can make a perfect square. Okay, let me zoom back out. Okay, oops, whoa. Let me just click OK. When you click OK, it zooms back out. So what we have now is we have to select, click on these two, select them both. Just it's I like that selection, which means make a selection. I like that first selection tool, which lets me just grab the area I want to select the objects in, and I don't want to select that, just these two. We're going to click on OK, and we're going to go to OK, and we want to go to the alignment tool. This is the third time in this tutorial we're using the alignment tool. Click on align, and this will get faster as you get used to things. It probably took me five minutes, and it's taken me longer to explain it. You're going to align to the center, to vertically, and you're going to align horizontally. And now you have a perfect square, a dashed perfect square. So think of all the applications you can use for your dashed perfect square. You can make, uh, well, hold on, let me, let me click OK and group this before I can tell you what your applications are. i got to group it. Object, edit, group. Whew, if I don't group it, then you move one, and then it does, you know. Now I can move it as one, okay? So... Now let me tell you some applications. I've been getting asked a lot in the Scan and Cut user group. We have a group on Facebook. I've been getting asked there. I've been getting asked on the... No, there's no directions, Stacy, with the manual. I don't think there's directions, no. <laughs> She's asking if there's directions. Ha, 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 I'm laughing out loud. <laughs> I'm sorry I have to laugh out loud if there's directions from brother. No, I, I'm self-taught. There's. I don't think there's. the directions are dismal. I think engineers wrote the guide. But anyway... Anyway, let me get back to this. I've been asked a lot lately how to make stitch shapes. So you can think of like you can use dashes as one of the ways to make a stitch shape. I don't think it does as good a job as say, um, you know, like a metal die. But if you had this shape and then you had another solid shape around it and you had a dash shape inside of it, then that would be like a stitch shape. There's other applications as well. But let's do this. Let's go. OK. And now let's anticipate what's going to happen next. OK. What's going to happen next is I need this to go right there. Okay? We're gone full circle. Okay? Yes, yeah, Stacy, if you're new to the machine, I do have video courses. I'm not saying that Brother doesn't offer manuals. There's a guide. There's a manual. I have it. I mean, you feel free to download it. And it has some menu items on it, but it doesn't have instructions step by step. So I, I'm a video person. I do videos. That's what I do. So I have a lot of videos for you, and there's like probably 500 on this channel alone. So that, that'll help you get started. Anyway, what we're doing now is we're um, making this, we're making this square, this dash square to go inside here, and now we're going to align them. Okay? So I hope you understand what's going on. Let's see. Hello, Sheila, Stacy, and Suzanne, Debbie, Sandy, all these people came and joined me. Okay, Deborah asked if I could resize it. Yes. Let, let's first get it to be one object and then we'll resize. Well, we won't resize it, but I'll show you how. Okay, so let's, we're going to take, now you know what we're going to do next, hopefully. We're going to take the selection tool. We want to use this selection, which is everything. We want everything, this object and that object. We want them both to be selected. Okay, and we want to go to this, again, the alignment tool. Align, go to align. Align vertically, align center horizontally, right? Okay, and we're going to now make a group. Okay, the difference between grouping is, Paula, good question, Paula asked, and that's, that's actually, you're helping me teach this better. Let me click OK, OK. Now, they're both still selected. They're perfectly aligned, and now I want to click on group. All right, if I, let me click on object, edit, and group. The difference between group and weld is very, very different. They're very, very different. If I, if I were to, let me just click on group just to get it done. Now watch, it's one group, okay? But I still have my dashed lines. Do you see that? Let's zoom in so you can see it. I still have my dashed lines. See the dashed lines? If I were to have just hit weld just now, I hope you can see that. Yeah, you can see the dashed lines. 
Let me, let me click it back out. If I would hit weld, I would have got one big shape. All my lines would have disappeared. Right? If I would hit weld. These, these two would have become one shape and all my lines, I just got done all that time working on, spent all that time working on those lines, they would have all disappeared and become one big mush. It was okay to weld the two shapes together at the beginning when we wanted just two rectangles, but you don't want to weld this because you need your dashed lines. All right, so now click OK and I'm going to cut this out. And then I'm going to, oh, the difference between the weld button would have just, yeah, I already told you that. Now, I just want to talk about resizing while I'm in here. When you go to edit, object edit, this is the resize button, and it could have resized it to make a different size box. But I'm not going to. This one fits perfectly in the clear, tiny treat box. All my experimentation, it fits perfectly. Okay, so if I were to try to, if I cut this out in the top of the mat, and then I cut four of them, I'm going to waste a lot of paper, so I'm going to show you something in a minute. Let me just click OK and cut. I'm going to click OK, cut. So we're going to make the, the YouTube, the liner here. And we're going to click start. So what we're doing, it's going to, it says two minutes because it takes more than one, but less than two. And it rounds up to the nearest minute. That's the reason I'm not doing all four right now on the mat together. I've already loaded what's called the Ornate Garden Specialty Designer Series paper. There's a reason I chose this paper today and the clear tiny treat boxes. I could have chose any kind of paper to do this tutorial on. But why this paper? It's retiring. It is so cheap right now. It's like, hello, here it is. Look at this, $6 right now. Ornate Garden Specialty Designer Series paper, gold foil. Let me get this little sticky off that says $6 because, oops, put that over there so you can see the coordinating colors. Okay, it, the coordinating colors are, I can't even read this, guys, I'm sorry. Okay, here, Bumblebee. I can read it through my camera, but not through my glasses. How sad is how sad is my vision? Bumblebee Early Espresso Gold Mint Macron Old Olive Terracotta Tile Whisper White. Okay, so that's that paper right now is on sale for it's on less chance. It's retiring and it's six dollars. Now to tell you the truth, when I saw this paper, it's almost done cutting the dash lines. See how it's cutting the dash lines? It's, t it's going ka-chunk, ka-chunk. It's, it's taking a while because of the dash lines. When I saw this paper, I was like, oh my goodness, it reminds me of the 70s. It is like so tacky. I keep it real. I'm going to show you the pages I think are tacky. Not the pages, but the pieces. Like, So I saw this paper, and I was like, here, let me show you some of Okay, like this one, the one with the daisies. I was like, oh my goodness. It's cute, right? But it's like, it's kind of tacky compared to... There's always a cool, like a better side. And these little flowers are cute, right? But they're kind of funky. I mean, look at all this funky flowers, right? But then you go to the other sides of these papers and you have all this beautiful foiling. If you've ever tried to do your own foiling, if you've ever got a foiling kit or some kind of foiling, do-it-yourself foiling kits. I'm, I'm in the middle of making a lot of projects, as you can tell. I always have a lot of coals in the fire. So I'm making, these are some foil papers from this. Here's the die I used. But anyway, if you've ever tried to do your own foiling, it's a nightmare. So when you can get foiled paper for $6 for six 12 by 12 sheets, hello, it's a great deal. I mean, if you want to do your own foiling, have at it. Foiling's fun, but it just takes, like, it would take forever. Okay, so, and you can't do, I mean, we can't do what Stampin' Up! does. We can try, but this is manufactured foiled paper. It's really nice. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking this, clear tiny treat box off of here and I want to finish up on the machine and then I want to show you how to assemble this box. See? Tacky side <laughs> and the beautiful foiled flowered side. But this is still cute for spring, right? And even though it's, I call it kind of tacky, that when you put a daisy on it, I mean look how cute it looks with the daisy. Right? It is pretty, right? The papers are so pretty. This foil paper is so pretty. Alright, so I need to finish up something on the screen because to finish up the question part and I want to show you, like you did all this work, I want to show you how to save it and then I want to show you what's something thing called auto layout, but I'm not going to cut any more of the boxes because, you know, I'm going to, I'm not going to cut them, but I'm going to show you. So let's click OK, and we're going to, we're going to go, we're going to do this. We're going to go back, and we're going to make four of these because it can't quite fit five of these on the mat, but it can click, it can put four on the mat. Now watch what happens when I go object edit, and I multiply this, and I can, I click on, I want three more, meaning it should be four total, right? I made three more. Or should it be four total? 
Nope. I think I need one more. Sorry. I always forget if it doesn't count the one I, it doesn't count the one I was doing. So rather than me try to get these all to fit because they won't quite fit because like when, when I tried to cut them like this before, they, they cut each other, they cut each other off. That part overlapped a bit. So what I do instead is I let the computer, I let the brother scan and cut. Do you do auto lay these out in a nice way for me? So the auto layout feature, when you get to the part where you say, okay, and you use this one, it looks a lot like the grouping option, but it has all these shapes all over. When you click on that and you click on the first option, it takes all your shapes and moves them in different directions to make the most out of your mat space. It, get, it turns them different directions and gives you, see that? It doesn't overlap any of them. So that's what I did before. And that's what you'd want to save because you want to make four of these liners with one piece of 12 by 12. So you could get a pack of 12 by 12 cardstock for six bucks, okay? And you can't beat that. And you'd be able to make 12 times four, 48 treat box liners. And then you would need a few packs of the clear tiny treat boxes. This, you need clear tiny treat boxes, which are also on sale, which I'll show you in the catalog. And then you'd be able to make all these little boxes for spring. Yes, these are great for spring. And I plan on giving them out. Now the problem is I can't give them out till next week. So that's why I didn't write Happy Easter on them. I just wrote like thank you and I'm just, you know, giving them out. But I mean I can I can probably give out some by Easter. But it's like not like I'm going to see that many people by Easter. So this is the clear tiny treat boxes that I'm about to show you how to assemble. And they are $6 instead of $7.50. And you get 16 of them I believe. Does it say it? Yeah. 16 clear acetate boxes. Like I said, I wanted to cry that these retired. Now, yes, we always come up with new packaging and there's cute stuff, but I've been using these forever. Like since I've been a demonstrator for many years, like, well, not I haven't been a demonstrator for many years, but for five years or so, I've been using these boxes and they're really fun for craft fairs. And I used them when I was a Stampin' Up! customer. So now I wanna show you how to assemble the box. And then I'll show you what's inside my boxes. Maybe I can just tilt my camera. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to get rid of this mat so it's not so ugly. <laughs> Here, let me unload the mat. I just wanted to show you how to, how to save this file and that was it. But I gotta get rid of this. <laughs> all right, so you have all, this, you have all this ready. One more time, I gotta go to the machine. Sorry, and we're gonna just, all right. You are at the machine and you wanna save this. Oh, did we use the auto layout? What happened to the auto layout? There we go. I must have accidentally hit a button. There you go, the auto layout, click OK. Now we're gonna click on save. Okay, click save, and you wanna save it to your machine, wirelessly to Canvas Workspace or to your USB stick. I'm gonna save it to my machine. It says it includes a group pattern. You can't undo the group. You can't ungroup. That's okay, we don't wanna ungroup. We want that little square to stay with this rectangles, right? So we don't wanna ungroup. And now it's saved. So now you turn on your machine, you, go, you, you turn on your machine, you see, you know, retrieve, you turn on your machine the next day, you retrieve data, go to your machine, and you scroll to the bottom of, there's all your tiny treat boxes. Cool, huh? You can use these over and over again. Here's some things we made in my box making course on Udemy. Coupons will be out again today for that, that course if you subscribe to my newsletter. All right, there you go. That's how you retrieve your file. All right, done with the machine. Now, really done with the machine. Now we're gonna just assemble. These aren't like hard to assemble. It's not, does, it's not, this is not rocket science. All we're doing is just sticking them in the box. It's a, it's a treat liner after all. So you fold along the perforation lines, right? And you, I'm just gonna cry. This is my last one, like literally my last one. I ordered more, I've, I've ordered some more. And then I'm, I also, I also, um, I, I, we're allowed to, demonstrators are allowed to pre-order in just a few hours. Well, at midnight. The de if you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, we're allowed to pre-order from the new catalog. So what I'm doing is I'm folding along all the, all the score lines. And I'm doing it before I pull off this plastic so my fingerprints don't get all over it. So if you are a demonstrator, they, the uh, list of what you're allowed to pre-order is already up in the demonstrator portal. I just saw it with my own two eyes and I'm excited. So anyway... When I place that pre-order on April 1st, I will be ordering more of these boxes if they're still there. But I didn't want to place a separate order just for the boxes because I'm already placing an order April 1st. But I did do last chance ordering already. Isn't this cool? So you don't get your fingerprints all over it. There's this nice little plastic lining. I know my friend Ian, Stampin' with Ian, 
He's he's like uh, hates the well. So do I. I hate the packaging too. But he's always talking about all this extra packaging Stampin' Up uses, and he is right. But I do like it for getting fingerprints off there. But it does. It is not a good thing for the environment. I mean, it definitely is not. He's right about that. All right. So what I've done is I've folded along all the score lines, and now I'm gonna now I'm gonna uh, on the bottom of it. I hope you can see that. I'm gonna take the two. Right, the two, I'm going to take this this big end, I'm sorry, not the, the little end, save the, here, save the little end, you can't really see it, that goes in last, this little flap goes in last, so we want to take the big end, the big side, and then you want to do the sides, here, let's see if you can, there's little instructions on the box, but there's, we're doing that, and then you, it just tucks in like that, tucks in like that, tucks in like that, here, and then you just push through if it doesn't. There we go. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so you assemble the box and then you put your little liner in the box. Let's use the one we just did. I like the foiled size fi foil side out. That's, you know, for this one. I mean, you could put the, you put the flower side in. Now, what I did is I put little, you just shove it in there. But if you would have gone two inches, right, then you can't really fold the sides of the box over easily. That's why I did the five point nine inches, right? Because now, look, it folds over nicely. Now you could have done, you could put your butterfly on there. I do have butterflies. Where's my bucket of crafty goodness? I started like gluing the butterflies on the front of it. Look here, this this one I glued I glued on there. But you could actually just, what I realized later, is you, you could actually tuck it in there. Because then someone can reuse the box and make it into a snowman box later at Christmas time or whatever. So instead of gluing it in, I just sort of tucked the butterfly in there. And the butterfly duet punch is only seven dollars and twenty cents, I think. Anyway, maybe I do need a little bit of glue, a little bit of just so it doesn't fall down. But instead of just, you could just put it on the paper. Anyway, I threw one in there and it, and it stuck. Oh, because you know why? Because I had candy in there already. That's why one of them is loose in there. But that's because I already had candy in there. So you just put a little decoration on it, and voila. And then I, I tuck this little plastic thing in behind the paper, but it's up to you if you want to do it behind it. So now I'm going to show you what's inside my boxes. And then you put your sentiment on top. And that was the Butterfly Duet Punch. Butterfly Duet Punch. Also discontinuing, also on clearance. This would be my best seller right now. At the, like of, of everything anybody's buying, it seems like everyone's like, add a butterfly punch to your order. That seems like what everybody's, <laughs> everyone's doing lately is adding a butterfly punch to the order. Okay, so this, that's where you get these little little pieces like that. And then this, this little one, this little one came out of the butterfly Brilliant Wings dies. And then this little guy, this little punch is not retiring. And I'm glad it's not retiring. It's called the Medium Daisy Punch. We have two daisy punches. And so what you do for that is you just get a piece of this pretty paper. Let me see if I have a piece that, that's already made for, I'm just trying to see if I have a piece that's not made for a card already. Perfectly measured. See, like I had this piece here. Here we go. We'll use this piece here. So what you do is to make a daisy for your box, you make one daisy and you could do this with any paper, right? And then you make another daisy. Okay, come on. I'm kind of stuck in there. You have to, you have to sometimes... Punch your, punch your way out of the jam. <laughs> you have to punch, use the punch to get out of the jam. All right, there you go, and you punch another daisy. And then what you do is you curl them a little bit, just using the bone folder or spatula or something, right? Curl your daisy. And then, of course, you know, you can make flowers with scan and cut too, but I, I when I have punches, I just use punches. They're easier for me to use up my scraps. A little bit of glue, a little dab will do you. And then you put a little gem in the middle. I think these gems are still available. I would normally use a gold gem in the middle, but I don't know what happened to my gold gem, so I'm going to use a silver gem. Okay, so that's how you make a decoration for your box, and you can put that right on your box. Oops, I should have let the glue dry. <laughs> and you can hold it on there with a dimensional. 
put it on your box. And I think that will go really cute with this daisy box. I think so. Okay, and then for the, furthermore, for these, I used Handsomely Suited. The, I used the thank you from the Handsomely Suited. Hi, Terry. All right. So if I forgot to say hi to anybody else, it's because I was looking away when you came popping on. So this is what you can put in the boxes. Perfect things. I'm trying to open up. Okay, so here's what I did for this one. For this clear tiny treat box, I put a K cup. And I put the daisy on the K cup. So here's like a Folgers Colombian. What I did is I used this dimensional so that someone can see what kind of coffee it is, right? You know what I mean? So it's not on there real tight because they got to take it off to put it in their Keurig machine. And you could even put like a little green tea in there. Okay? So that will fit in there. Okay, let's do this one next. I'll do the candy last. So this one is the thank you from Handsomely Suited. And you could put a bath bomb in there. Bath fizzy. Don't say the word bomb on YouTube. Bath fizzy. Okay? with some little grass. You see why these are perfect little boxes for craft fairs, for gift giving, for stocking stuffers? That's why I would be ordering a lot more of these. Because like if I get an order, and I don't really solicit orders, but what happens is like I give someone a gift, right? Say, say I go to work and I say, oh, here's something for you. And then someone goes, oh my gosh, we have a baby shower. We have a wedding shower. We have this, we have that coming up. Can you make this and that for me? So then I end up getting orders. So then I end up like going through my whole stash in one fell swoop because I have to, I need that many of them. So I don't really solicit orders. I don't really have time to do orders, but sometimes for friends I do orders. So this is the last box and all the stuff that'll fit in it. I could just show you all the little things. So you could take your little Hershey nuggets and this is mini Mentos and mini Tic Tacs. Look how much stuff fits in that box. Okay, four little Tic Tacs. I sell these on my paperchef.com Tic Tac kits. These are little mini Mentos. They look like that. And then you wrap those, and then this is the Hershey Nuggets. Okay, so that's all the stuff you can put in them. You take a Hershey Nugget, that's before, and that's after. These are just such an easy little gift to give someone. And I just want to also mention that even if these are retired, and you're seeing this video like years later, Maybe, maybe you're seeing this video in 2022. I'm making this video in 2021. And you're like, darn, those are retired. It doesn't matter. The skill I just taught you, you go to any store, you get any box, and, it, and you figure out what size liner you need to make for your box, and you make a liner to fit in whatever box. Okay, you can use this for your cards, your greeting card boxes. Make a liner to put your greeting card box. Make a liner for any box. Make a liner to put your cookies in. Make your own box, and then make a cute little liner to protect someone from like the other box, like where you put like food in the part with the liner. Like if you put chocolate, you're like afraid the chocolate's gonna melt. And you put this, you put that in a box, you give someone chocolate, piece of chocolate, and then they pull this out, but then they still have another liner. So you could put liners within liners. You can make explosion boxes this way. This is how to make an explosion box. You, this is exactly the application for making an explosion box, where you make a lid, and when someone pulls off the lid, boom, it pops open, and that's your explosion card, your explosion box. So I just hope that you can understand this concept and use it to apply to whatever projects you're working on. All right, so any other great deals I want to tell you about? Yes, um, because while we're here, um, the mini, I mean, I must mention it because it's, it was, as of this video, this was on sale too, and I don't know if I'm going to get to do a video on it, but for $6.90, this Flowers for Every Season Designer Series paper is on sale. Okay, these two are marked down a little bit. Oh, no, not this one. Uh, here, this one. Forever Greenery and Artistry Blooms are marked down a little bit, but this is marked down a lot. Okay, and then there's a couple other great deals, but like that Butterfly Duet Punch, um, like the, the ribbon that goes with this, Ornate Garden. It, as of last time I checked, it was only $2.80 for the ribbon that goes with the Ornate Garden. And I don't know where the page that's on, but it's called like Terracotta Tile and Old Olive ribbons so there's there's just a lot of great deals right now so definitely check out our last chance items and the mini pizza boxes i'm also going to cry about them retiring the gold ones we're already out of but we do have the white mini pizza boxes on sale as well and they're retiring and i have i've been showing lots of projects with them on my channel lately 
So definitely check that out. I think that's about it unless I can find the ribbon in the next minute because I don't like to make my viewers wait. Here we go. There's the ribbon. This ribbon here, the Ornate Garden Combo Pack, is on sale right now for $2.80. That's a deal that I only discovered because my customer was ordering it and I was like, where did they get ribbon for $2.80? Whoa, wait a minute. And I went and looked. And I was like, good find, good find. Because I didn't really get to look at the list very carefully, but then I kind of noticed things if somebody ordered it. I was like, okay. So that's all for now. This is the Paper Chef. I hope you enjoyed the Scan and Cut tutorial. And I, yep, I hope you have a happy Easter. And I hope to see you again before the Easter weekend. Have a great week. Bye, everybody. Thank you all for popping on. Thanks.